Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on something kind of cool for our Soul Blight Grave Lords. Um, what I'm really enjoying about uh, the Grave Lords is they've got all these really kind of cool mechanics, and one of them is the Grave Sites. Now, you're supposed to pick a point on the battlefield and use that as kind of this, you know, this grave site. Um, so I wanted something to represent those. Uh, I went through my bits boxes and I found some of these old kind of D&D gargoyles that I really liked. And this just a little bit of an entrance kind of step in gate type thing here. And I thought that, man, these would be great gravesite markers. They really fit in with the SBG aesthetic. And um, yeah, they got kind of a cool feeling to them. Uh, there's even not a lot of, uh, not, not too much of, uh, you know, kind of bad detailing going on in here. They're actually fairly well modeled up. You got little guys in the corner here. And, you know, they just got a really kind of a cool feel to them. Uh, we know we'll do them with lots of grass and kind of overgrown and stuff. And I think it'll be a really cool uh, kind of way to go. Now, as far as painting goes, I didn't want to really do the bronze thing. I think it's kind of overdone and super easy. Um, I didn't want to go with the modeled kind of gray concrete. So I want something a little bit more warmer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a Wraithbone primer. And uh, I'm going to use a little bit of washes to kind of tamp that down. But this should be a really simple project. And I think it's going to add a lot of personality to the battlefield. So we'll get those primed up and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got our gargoyles all kind of primed up. And um, I hope this, uh, hope this one doesn't lose me my YouTube rating here, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, because the contrast uh, kind of primers like the Wraith Bone and all that are so thick, they actually do a lot of coverage. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some Athonian Camo Shade here. And uh, I'm just going to tap it inside my water. So um, basically what I'll do is I'll load up my brush with the camo shade and then I'll just kind of tap the surface of the water like tough to see in there and that should give me just enough thinning out that I can go in here and set it all up so I'm going to wash all of the uh, gargoyles and I just want to make sure I don't pool so I don't want to be dyeing the whole thing green I just want to go in and just kind of provide a little bit of that kind of greenish type of color and then not have any kind of pooling. All right, so the wash is now just kind of settling in and you can see that these guys definitely belong in a graveyard. Um, I'm really liking that kind of grimy, kind of well-natured uh, kind of look to them. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring all those highlights back out, but I don't want to do like a really aggressive uh, dry brush. I just want to want, kind of want to soften and bring back some of the edges there. And of course, dry brushing is the best way to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the biggest brush that you can kind of find for dry brushing. And what that'll do is that'll give us a nice kind of even uh, highlight as we go. We'll use Screaming Skull as our paint. And I'm just going to go back over. So essentially, we're just restoring uh, some of that uh, color uh, that we've had in there. So I'll get some paint on my uh, brush here. Okay. So again, you don't want uh, kind of too much on your brush. Uh, we'll get that in focus. There we go. Uh, I'll use a napkin and I'll just kind of, you know, get the majority of it off. Now, if it's still a little wet, you're actually not going to lose out too much because we've got such a big brush. So all I'm going to do now is just go, but now I want to keep it uh, straight up and down. I know that's not going to make the most sense on these uh, side pieces here, but I want it to look like that kind of rainy, streaky uh, kind of look to it. And you can tell I'm just going over like super light and we're just drawing some of those highlights back out again. And where that streakiness is going to be especially as important is on these kind of vertical surfaces. I don't know if you can see that there, but it makes it look like that, you know, the rain has fallen on it uh, a lot. And that'll also really look great on the wings as well. So just doing like a vertical dry brush here. So with the wash all kind of settled in, uh, and the dry brush done, man, it looks really nice. This kind of living architectural uh, type kind of setup here. So I'm really liking just kind of the, that subtle, you know, kind of nice kind of look to it. Now you can always go back in with a brush and just touch things up, just kind of overbrush with a wet brush uh, on certain places that you want to accent. Or again, if you want to darken something down, you can always go back in with more uh, Thonian Camo Shade and you're good to go. So. Um, I've really only got a couple things left that I want to do in terms of a painting thing. Obviously, i got to do the base. That's fine. Um, but what I want to do right this second is I'm going to go after... This one here has got some vines. And it's also got some kind of greenery there as well. 
So I'm going to use a contrast, which is Creed Camo, and I'm going to use that for the leaves specifically. And what's really nice about this, of course, is that we dry brush that kind of bone color in. Uh, so that makes life a little bit easier that way. So we're just going to go in and touch the leaves uh, around here with Creed Camo. So the contrast does a really good job of just kind of getting in and getting those leaves uh, basically just kind of done. Um, obviously I got lots of time to invest in other models. So um, the next one we're gonna do now is just for all the branches and kind of all the vines. Uh, we're gonna go with Contrast Wildwood. And of course that's a great, uh, It's it gets pretty dark, but if we're going on top of the, um, if we're going on top of the bone color, the primer, then it works out pretty well. All right, so I'll just go in and get all the root structure done with our wildwood. All right, so that's really kind of coming together for me now. So what I'm going to do, I'll work on the bases. I'll get these done. Uh, you can decorate the bases, of course, to match your army. Uh, and then I'm going to do some moss effects with a little bit of flock, and I think we should be done. All right, so these guys turned out really well. Um, I really like the fact that they just kind of look like they're overgrown and been out in the rain and the sun for a little bit too long. Um, they're not like that kind of bleak kind of concrete -y color. And I like that they got just a little bit of life to them. Now on this guy here we've got the vines and we've got the, the, the kind of the leaves kind of growing on it as well. And these guys don't necessarily have that as part of the models, but one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of like everyday kind of flock here, um, you know, something with a little bit of extra punch of color. And I'm just going to collect a little bit of moss uh, using that flock in a few spots, just like these little nooks and crannies where moss uh, might uh, collect because moisture is growing there. So for example, with this guy here, uh, just a little bit of moss might kind of collect and grow in here uh, and up in here as well and maybe you know a little bit uh, kind of in this little nook and cranny here and just looking for spots where um, that moss just might uh, just kind of take up residence there because the moisture would collect um, not much going on here with uh, PVA and all that Right, so I'm just gonna find some spots again where um, it just looks like moss would grow and it just makes it look a little more, um, just a little more natural. So getting that flock on there really kind of ties a bow on these guys and sets them off as being done. Uh, they definitely look like they're living out in the middle of a, this graveyard, kind of unkept, but you know, at some point in time were carved with lots of care. Um, these would be just as at home in a D&D campaign as in my Soul Blight's uh, army, which will be pretty sweet to see on the tabletop. And now I've got markers for my grave site. So I'm actually pretty stoked to see that happen. And that's it for this one, guys. Um, if you like this video, obviously jab that like button. It really helps get the video out there and you know just kind of lets me know what content you guys are looking after um, if you haven't subscribed already consider subscribing you'll get loads of videos just like this one uh, and make sure you ding that bell as well which makes sure that we get notifications of all the future videos out to every single one of you guys so thanks a lot for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video